This is a creepypasta that I really liked called The Strangest Security Tape I Have Ever Seen. Now, with a title like that, <laughs> you're expecting something pretty um, not that good. <laughs> but um, please, uh, let's not judge a little creepypasta by its cover. And uh, let's get through this, shall we? <laughs> let's um, read a creepypasta called The Strangest Security Tape I've Ever Seen. I work at a gas station in rural Pennsylvania, represent. It's a boring job, but it's pretty easy, and it pays all right. A few weeks ago, this new guy started. We'll call him Jeremy. Jeremy is weird. He's about 25 or 26, and he hardly speaks, but he's got the creepiest laugh I've ever heard. My boss and I have noticed this, but it's never been a problem. So there's not much we can do about it. Customers have never complained about him. He's always done his job fairly well, up until a few weeks ago, anyway. That's when things started going missing. Employee theft can be a problem at any business that sells customer goods. And there's only one person working at a time at this gas station. It's a pretty small place. About two weeks ago, my boss started noticing that we were pretty short on motor oil. At first, it was a few containers at a time. Then entire shelves and boxes in the back room. Pretty soon, entire shipments would be gone the day after we got them. And it'd always be right after Jeremy shifts. My boss has checked the security camp tapes from every single night he worked, but could never catch him in the act. Jeremy, Jeremy would simply lock up at closing, and the motor, motor oil would be gone next day. The boss usually takes the tapes home with him and try to catch Jeremy stealing. But his daughter had a softball game last night, so he asked me to watch the tape for him. He offered to be pay me overtime under the table, so I obviously took that offer. There are three t cameras. So he gave me three different tapes to check. I figured it would be a long night, but I'm trying to save up for vacation, so I really needed the money. So I took the tapes home, popped up with an old VCR, and sat back. Two years ago, which is the last time I worked. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, two days ago, which is the last time Jeremy worked. Uh, Jeremy started at 4 p.m. Everything seemed pretty normal at first. He can up his drawer switched off with the girl who was working before him and waited for the customer. The first person came in was Mrs. Templeton. The timestamp for the video read 403. A regular. She picked up her cigarettes and newspaper and paid with a 20. Nothing usual there. The next customer was some local guy named Ron. He drives a motorcycle. He usually comes in every few days. He filled up his tank, got a bag of beef jerky, paid with his credit card, and then left. The next guy was... Next was some guy with a cowboy hat. I've never seen him before. But we got plenty of strangers passing through, just like any gas station. He got $40 worth of diesel fuel, paid with a $100 bill, and went on his way. I sat back and la sighed. The only thing more boring than this job is watching someone else do it. My boss's offer was enough to keep me watching, though, so I left the tape on. Everything seemed pretty normal. I had a feeling that... I had a feeling that if Jeremy was stealing the motor oil, he knew we were suspicious of him by now. So I didn't expect him to be dumb enough to catch us, let us catch him on camera. Things stayed around boring until 5 o'clock. At 5.03, Mrs. Templeton came back in. She must have forgotten something, but she didn't. She bought the same pack of cigarettes as before and the same newspaper. She paid with another 20. <laughs> That's odd, I thought. But then again, she's a little absent-minded. I thought Jeremy should have told her she already got her smokes, but it's not against the rules to sell something the same thing twice. Then Ron came in again. He bought another tank of gas for his motorcycle again. I let her check the outdoor camera because I thought I maybe had another car he wanted to fill up. And the same pack of beef jerky. He paid with his credit card again. No big deal. I just figured it was a weird coincidence. Mrs. Templeton was, all, was forgetful, and Ron probably owns more than one Harley. That's when the guy with the cowboy hat came back in. I felt a chill run down my spine. Don't get diesel. Don't get diesel. Don't get diesel. I found myself whispering in my empty living room. But he did. He got $40 worth of diesel fuel and paid with another $100 bill. Every mood he made was identical to his first visit, right down to the way he scratched his nose before he walked out. Either this guy is rich, owns a lot of trucks, and just moved into town, or something really bizarre as was happening. I kept watching. Every customer for the next hour was the same as before. Every single one. 
I was seriously freaked out. And then at 6.03, Mrs. Templeton walked back in. She bought her cigarettes and newspaper again and paid with a 20 again. I thought I was going to lose it. I only watched another half hour before I started fast forwarding through the rest. It was all the same. Every customer would come up at the exact same times, exactly one hour apart. I know what you're thinking. That sneaky motherfucker Jeremy had messed up the tapes. He had run a loop of his first hour of business over and over. That wasn't the case. There were windows around the cash register that were there were windows around the cash register that area that were camera covers. And I watched the sunlight fade as time ran on. Jeremy's routine didn't loop over. He swept, moped, restocked, and did all of his duties exactly how you would expect. But the same customers just kept coming in. I was panicking at this point. Something was seriously wrong with what I was seeing. I had no explanation for it. I just skipped ahead and whenever he was locked up and walked out of his car. He hadn't stolen anything, but I kept watching, just to make sure. I fast-forwarded the time to about midnight. At exactly 12.03, out of nowhere, Jeremy's face pops up as a camera. I didn't even mean his head... Sorry, I'll read that line real quick. At exactly 12.03, out of nowhere, Jeremy's face pops up at the camera. I, I don't mean he moved his head into view. I mean that one second the store was empty, next second his face was all I could see. He wasn't looking at the camera. He was looking at me. I was sure of it. I screamed and fumbled for the remote. By the time I grabbed it, he was gone. Just as soon as he left. One frame was there, the next he wasn't. My hands were shaking like crazy, but I popped in another tape. The indoor camera shows the back area by the cash register. And I'll be able to see how he got his, put his face on the camera like that. I skipped, my, I skipped ahead at 12.03, but there was nothing. But I'd be able to see him standing on a chair or something on this on the tape, but he wasn't there. I didn't see him enter the store at all after he left. It was like he really wasn't there. He doesn't know the security code, so no alarms were triggered at night after he locked up. What I did see, however, is that at 12.03, motor oil vanished off the shelf. All of it. Same as Jeremy's face. God damn it, guys. <laughs> Same as Jeremy's face. One second it was there, and the next it wasn't. I turned the tape off and went to bed. But I didn't get a wink of sleep. Okay. My body was exhausted right now, but my mind is racing. That tape was undoubtedly the creepiest, most disturbing thing I have ever seen in my life. I work in a few hours. My boss asked me to bring the tapes back and let him know what I found. But I really, what the hell am I going to say? Germany works a night shift tonight, directly after me. So the plan is for my boss to come in and just before I leave and just confront him with me. I'm supposed to be the one who caught him stealing. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to do. I suppose I have to show my boss tapes, but I don't want him to watch them with him. I never want to see something like that again. I can't get the image of Jeremy just smiling directly in the camera out of my mind. It was the creepiest look I have ever seen on another human being's face. Anyway, I'm going to try to get some last minute sleep before I have to go deal with this. All you guys know what happens. Update. 2.49 p.m. Updating from my phone. Apologies in advance for the errors. My boss just finished watching the last of the tapes. I told him what to expect, but you really can't prepare someone for something like that. He's scared shitless. I still am too. And Jeremy is due to come in at four. We got a little bit over an hour to get our shit together, but none of one of us is, knows what he's going to say to him. He's just a fucked up guy who likes stealing motor oil and scared of living shit out of people? Or is this something else? I don't know if this is crazy, but someone. But does anyone think he could have... Anything to do with it's this time loop? But boss said he never noticed anything like that on the other tapes. But the way he popped up in this one made me think he knew I would be watching. It's like he wanted me to see what he could do. Like he was showing off or something. The way he smiled into the camera was like a little kid showing you a sandcastle he just built. Or something like that. I don't know. I probably sound crazy. I sure feel the part. I'm going to talk to my boss some more. We have to calm ourselves down and figure out how to handle this. I'll update again tonight. But I don't, but I have a really bad feeling about how this is going to play out. Update 4.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. 
tried calling him, but his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update, 5.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update, 6.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update, 7.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update, 8.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update, 10.58 p.m. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. I just got home and saw my previous updates. The things make less sense now more than ever. Here's what I can tell you. I went to work. Jeremy never showed up. My boss and I decided to call the police, as I'm sure you're well aware. But I just When I decided to pick up the phone call, though, the sun went out. I shit you not. That's what I thought happened. Apparently, I blacked out for exactly five hours because when I looked at the clock, it was 9.33. I think I got stuck in Jeremy's time loop. And then I snapped out at the exact point I blacked out. If that makes sense. But that's when things got really weird. My boss was right next to me when I blacked out, ready to collaborate my story to the cops. When I came to, the phone was in my hand, but it was dead. Not even a dial tone. My boss was still right there, but he wasn't moving. He was just standing up, frozen. I looked at the clock again when it wasn't moving. The second hand was stuck at 12. It was 9.33 exactly. The clock on the register, computer screen, wasn't moving either. My phone was frozen. There was even a customer at the register waiting for my boss to get him cigarettes. I'm betting that it would have been his fifth pack for the day. I got the fuck out of there. Didn't even lock up. Didn't turn the lights on. Sorry, guys. I didn't grab security tape, stopped loading the internet. Believe me, that's the last thing on my mind. The gas station was on a major highway, and the cars were parked along it. Even Except they weren't parked. They were all just frozen. People inside sitting still as wax statues. I got in my car and prayed it would start. Thankfully, it did. About halfway home, time started up again. The stack from the radio turned into music, like it was supposed to be. And from what I can tell by listening to the host talking between the songs, no one noticed the time freeze, or whatever it was. I was the only one. Well, I'm sure Jeremy noticed it as well. I still have no clue where he is or what the hell he's doing. I'm hiding in my room and calling the police again in the morning. I don't know if I ever got through to them before, or if I did, whether they took me seriously. I'm scared for my life at this point. I'll update tomorrow if I can. Final update, 3.33 a.m. I finally fell asleep last night around 4. I have no idea how I did it. I guess exhaustion finally got the mess of me. This morning, I woke up with my phone ringing. It was my boss. He'd been calling me about since about 6. He woke up when time turned back on last night and immediately called the cops. They came to by me and saw what was wrong and he told them everything. The police around here are all small time guys. They were more concerned about the missing motor oil than anything, but my boss figured he would take it as long as he had their attention. They, ended, they decided to go look for Jeremy. He kept all of our employees applications on file and since Jeremy started working here, he was easy to find. They checked his address and on it and headed over to his house. You're not going to believe what they found. The address Jeremy listed on his application was an empty lot, or at least now it is. There used to be a house there, but it burned down in 1993. Being a small town, almost everyone remembers that fire. A family of four used to live there way back when. Rumor has it that it had been a strange son that never, that, who they never really talked about, but I can't feel sure if that's true. What I, can't, can't for, what, I, what I can say is true is that after an insurance investigation, the fire was ruled as arson. The entire house was soaked in oil and torched with a Molotov cocktail. The entire family was sleeping when it happened. None of them survived. They never caught the guy who did it. Rumor has it that they tried to contact the estranged son, but no one could find him. Anyway, my boss called and told me about this, and I freaked out. Then he asked me to come to the gas station. What, are you crazy? I said. But he assured me that the cops were with, here with him. Then he dropped the bomb. The FBI were in town, and they were going to talk to me one way or the other. So I might as well come in. 
It's about 7.15 and I want to go back to bed, but I figured I wouldn't be able to sleep as much anyway, so I went down. Four men in suits greeted me and told me to have a seat. They went over everything and two or three times until they got all the details down. I told them about Jeremy, the security tape, last night at work, everything. Finally, after I finished, one of them agents said, Oh, Christ, we got another one on our hands. They, maybe, they then maybe signed a bunch of papers saying I wouldn't tell anyone about what happened, so I can't say much more. I might be breaking the law just by posting this. So now I'm home. I'm not sure what to do about myself. That agent's words when I told him the story are going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Anyways, I gotta go. I have some errands to run today. Then I have to go to work and pick up some tapes. My boss and I think this new guy, Jeremy, he's complete creep. He's stealing motor oil, stealing motor oil and I have to watch some security footage to see if I can catch him doing it. I have better things to do, but my boss is paying me overtime under the table. And I'm trying to save up for a vacation that I could really use the money. It should be pretty simple. Oil, the oil goes missing right after his shifts. I just have to wash the tapes, catch him in the act, and that will be that. All right. There we go. That was a short one.